So as of right now, there is not a single farm animal left on this farm. Uh, all I have is two herding dogs and a barn cat, and that's it. And it's a pretty strange situation to be in. Uh, and also kind of uh, a comfortable one. But we're gonna talk about that a little later on. Uh, I thought I'd take you along for a little farm tour to show you how I'm thinking this whole operation this year. I'm trying to make as much food as possible for me and, my, and, for me and the family. <laughs> but before I get any animals in here, I uh, need to, uh, to get everything in order. <laughs> But before I get any animals in here, uh, everything has to be in order. Uh, and especially the most important thing, and that is winter water. Not having water is the source of an unbelievable amount of stress that you don't want in your life. If you have a bunch of thirsty animals, you can forget everything else you were going to do that day. Uh, and you have one main goal, and that is to fix the water. I'm gonna divide this operation into two and separate the animals that I'm going to keep over the winter. They will be stationed here in this room. So this is where the winter water needs to, uh, to work. I'm also going to have some animals out on grass, uh, but I'm going to harvest them before winter comes so they don't need uh, the winter water. Uh, they only need water. <laughs> So after losing the last duck and chicken, I started to strip down this whole room uh, and I wanted to build it from the bottom, um, starting with the water. And I'm debating whether to dig it into the ground or have heated fire, um, tubes, water hose, yeah, the, the thing, the hmm, pipes, and have heated water pipes. The thing about that is when the power goes out, uh, the water freezes and one thing is if it thaws and everything works, but if that means that the pipes will break because of the ice inside, uh, that's a no-go. The main thing is that it works. I can't sit in the office and wonder if, uh, if, if the animals have water or not. It just needs to work. So if we take this room and what I'm thinking, and none of this is set in stone, so uh, the ideas tend to float around a little, but that's the entrance. And over here, I would like to have some, um, a pig, a mama pig, uh, but I don't think I can have only one. I probably need two, so it has company. And when I talk about this now, this, is, this will be their winter home. Uh, they will still have access to be outside all year long. This is just for the winter. And I want one or two pigs in here, uh, exit out there. So they would then come out here and have this whole place for themselves. I would make an uh, enclosure or a pen, a pig pen here, so that when there is a flood, I don't have to let them all out. And the thing is that those pigs will be the mama pigs. And when they have piglets, they can have this whole place for themselves, like a bay of pigs, or that's probably the opposite of bay of pigs. Is it a peninsula? So if this is the entrance, when there are only one or two, and they have this pen and this whole place. But when they have the piglets, they move out of here and into the Mekkarkjeller. So when they are a family of five or 20, they can all live in there. And then I would only need water for the summer. I don't have to think about it freezing. The pigs are gonna get harvested before winter comes anyway. And when they are harvested, the, the mama pigs moves back in here for the winter. So there used to be, uh, woo, echo, echo, echo. There used to live cows here and uh, they live upstairs. And when they pooped, uh, the farmer just um, scooped it down. So it fell down here, but I could fill this uh, area up with straw and this is, could easily fit a couple of mamas and, uh, and some piglets. I would just need to get all the water out first. Uh, we have a flood every spring and sometimes the water level rises and and fill this room with water. Uh, so, for, so for this to work, I would probably need to pump this water out and also wait for the flooding season to be over. So that's a thing that I didn't think of. <laughs> and 
And this is where the area for the pig stops. And I think all of this could be for the sheep and eventually the cow or cows. I probably can't have only one cow, I need two. I don't know the rules if you can, can have sheep and cows together or if sheep and cows want to be together. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe make a smaller pen so that the sheep can fit in and go out and in uh, as they please. I also would like to have uh, a couple of chickens in here. I'm not quite sure where that should be. That is the old chicken and the cows. And I'm thinking either this could be a place for, for chickens or for layer hens, uh, or this whole, whole area could just be a door and an entrance. And around the corner from the pigs, we have the entrance for the sheep and the cows, and they will come out here. And I will make a pen for them out here. And they also have access straight out to the pasture. I still want them to be able to be outside in the winter, but if I can't have them out on pasture, I'll at least have this pen. This is the other side. I probably will keep this door so that I can get a tractor or a mini loader or whatever in here. I haven't quite figured out how to feed them yet. There is a bale production out here and I could feed them with the bale. But I don't know if, if I have one or two cows and if I have two or three sheep, uh, if they can eat a big bale before it uh, turns into mold, or if I should pack it myself into small squares and, and feed them by hand. That way I wouldn't need the tractor to work for them to get food. And also I could go on holiday and have my kids and my mom stay here and feed them, but that would require some more stuff for the tractor and also manual labor. Um, and I also would need somewhere to store it. If I have bales, I can just store them out on the field. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> and out on the field is where the sheep and the cows uh, will go and graze during the summer. I also want some chickens out here and some turkeys, so they will graze and free range and, and all of that good stuff. Uh, hopefully behind the the sheep and the cows. I keep on saying sheep and the cows. The cow thing is up to debate, uh, even though it's not, but it is because I want milk and I want all the good stuff that you get from milk with the cheese and the sour cream and butter and also for meat, of course. I also have uh, another field uh, on the other side of the river, uh, but I'm going to leave that and just rent it out for grass production and concentrate on this area to have it like close to home so that I can keep an eye on it and, uh, and, and watch them from the window. Now I'm just talking about the meat. I also want some vegetables, uh, but that's the thing that I don't know anything about. Uh, that's why I'm concentrating on the meat because um, I know, I kind of know something about that. I would eventually like a greenhouse, uh, but I think maybe for this season, uh, maybe some root uh, vegetables and some strawberries. I do have a thousand square meter field where the, the pigs were uh, last year, but I may place the ducks there. This whole area has uh, a fence around it with, uh, with masks that are small enough to, so that the, the ducks can't get through, I hope. I've already made a pool. Uh, the pigs use this to drink. So I would need to make them a small duck house for them to sleep in at night so that they will be safe. Uh, but hopefully they can use this pool for swimming and drinking. And if you haven't heard the song that I'm humming before, you should uh, after, right after this go into Spotify and uh, look up Mary Schneider, Yodeling the Classics. I think this one is called Skater's Waltz. You will not regret it. So this is also on the list. Uh, it's funny how you try to prepare for winter and Suddenly it hits and everything freezes and get covered in snow. And when spring finally arrives, it's kind of like you have all this junk lying around that you haven't seen in uh, five months and suddenly it all reappears. And uh, yeah, <laughs> at least it won't go anywhere for a while. Uh, 
but at least I know where it is. Another thing I need to, uh, to check out is I have all these trees that are lying around on the property and it uh, seems like I have a beaver. Um, so a hot tip is that the, that's what the next video will be about. So of all the animals that I had last year, there are none left. I sold the water buffaloes. The two pigs I harvested, uh, I had three turkeys and I harvested them as well. Uh, they tasted delicious even though they were pretty cool. But they started to roam and bother the neighbors. So to keep the peace, I decided to, uh, to eat them. I also had some ducks and some uh, layer hens. The layers were starting to get pretty old, seven or eight years. So I lost a couple of them to a natural death. They were just old. The only thing that I didn't plan for was the ducks. Uh, I got a lot of help from a fox, I think. One day I got home from the office and they were just gone. Uh, he'd left only one layer and one duck, uh, so I decided to harvest them as well. Uh, and now there are no animals here and it's, it's so strange because uh, I'm used to having animals around me all the time. Uh, I had to, I have to, I have to buy my eggs at the store and I haven't done that in like, the last nine years, I think. But it's also been kind of okay because I haven't had anything else to, to think about and care for than myself. No going out every morning and uh, every night to check on them and feed and check if the water is frozen. None of that. But it's, but it's been a couple of months now and uh, I'm starting to miss it and I'm ready to get back at it. One thing I want to do differently, at least with the poultry, is that the runner ducks I had were like skittish and afraid and uh, it was hard to get their trust. So whenever I got some new poultry in there, whether it was ducks or chickens, they would all learn from the runner ducks and it was hard to get close to them. Uh, filming them was almost impossible. I needed to use my biggest tele lens. This time I want to raise all the poultry from newborns so that I can get to know them, they can get to know me and they can and I can have their trust so that I can go in there without uh, scaring them off. Another animal that I would like to have and uh, that is important to keep cool and calm are bees. Uh, I don't know anything about keeping bees, but I hear that you need like a course or some education to start. Maybe it's too late for this season, but I'm going to check it out. I also talked to some neighbors earlier today and they have uh, miniature pigs that are pregnant and uh, <sighs> Either way, I'm psyched to get started and get out of this hibernation that I've been in for the last couple of months. Uh, it's getting brighter, it's getting warmer, the snow and ice is melting. I miss having animals around and I'm really pumped to get started. Uh, and I hope you are too. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Pew, pew, pew.